Greetings, everyone. Hi, Mr. T. Just give me two minutes. So, good evening, beauties. Welcome to Free Flame Thoughts. Tonight's guest of the hour goes by Mr. T. Terence Thompson. And the topic of the hour is, does success change people? Or does the people around them change? Is that the way you want to say it? <laughs> so let me bring Mr. Terence straight on and we will get into this subject. <laughs> oh, it's been a lovely day. Really has. And I've been excited to have this live talk tonight. <clears throat> into it yeah okay. Mr. TT where are you at? hi hello how are you today? I'm good but you're looking kind of dark and mysterious and stuff so I need more light? I can make that happen I see all of yous Okay, yeah, let, let me let me uh let me make it a little brighter in here, okay? Say that again, please. Let me uh put more light in here. Give me one second. Yeah, okay. Sometimes it looks really different uh, until I watch it back and then the lighting could be either too dark or too bright. But as I'm looking at you, I can't see any of your features and it'd be lovely for us all to see you. Yeah, can you hit that? Thank you. That's okay. Take your time, Perfect. take your time. How was that? Oh, that's a lot better. Hopefully you look even brighter when we watch back the live. <laughs> Hi, everyone, and welcome to the viewers that has joined. Mr. T, how are you doing? I'm doing well, thank you. How are you? Oh, my God, I had a lovely day. I'm feeling amazing. Been very excited to have this talk today. Every awesome. guest is always so amazingly different. So let me just take a moment just to walk us in. Okay, and let me ask you about your day leading up to this live. How did you spend it? What did you get up to today? Wow, so I'm uh, like right in the middle of a project that I just released, a CD that seems to be doing fairly well right now. And I'm actually in the process of uh, writing new music for another CD or another project and collaborating with a couple of artists. So I got up early this morning, and got straight in the studio and just started, you know, trying to do what I do. So, wow. good day. Great day so far. Been a good day. You see, I know that you are a, I was going to say, musician, producer, singer, songwriter, but I also know we're trying to conceal your major project, and that's why we're not going to talk too much about what you do, correct? Right, right. Absolutely. Have you, once you unplug your album or your EP, and we're going to go into it, because I love that discussion, yeah? Absolutely. Okay, so today we're going to be discussing... Um, success and uh, why success changes people or does the people around them change is that correct yeah i, I think pretty much that that's pretty accurate yes yeah but before um before i do hi everyone just keep coming on and we're going to interact with you as we go and don't pay no mind to the numbers because people can watch the playback and it just starts rising after that yeah but before we get into the actual gritty of the actual subject can i ask you a few questions about who you are is that okay absolutely okay so let's start with who is mr tt so uh terence thompson <laughs> is is a husband a father a son, a brother, mm -hmm. you know, um, uh, just, I, I would hope just a uh, down to earth person, you know, mm -hmm. uh, very, uh, you know, uh, down to earth, passionate about life, mm -hmm. uh, you know, just uh, enjoy life, you know, and, and, and uh, the opportunities that I'm afforded, you know, so I, I, I'm extremely blessed and fortunate. And, and I, I often say when people ask me, how am I doing? And I always say, it's really good to be Terry Thompson. So. Oh, that's such an amazing response. Does it, get, it doesn't get better than that, does it? It, it? it doesn't. No. So I'm I'm very fortunate. I've had a great life, an amazing mm. life, and so I'm I'm in a I'm a good I'm in a good place. That is lovely. I love when people say I'm in a good place because we know how life could be. So that's amazing. You are blessed. Yeah, <laughs> I, 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 so, I do agree. That's great. So the next um, thing I'd like you to share is where were you born? Obviously, you are have an American accent, so tell us a bit about that. Where were you born, first of all? 
So I'm from uh, Newport News, Virginia, which uh, is also known as Bad News, Virginia. Uh, oh. You know, yeah, so we've had quite a few uh, uh, celebrities, uh, quite a few notable athletes come out of the same neighborhood that I actually grew up in. Uh, Allen Iverson, if you're into basketball, Allen Iverson, of course. Uh, ah. Aaron, uh, Aaron Brooks, NFL player. Uh, Michael Vick, also in the NFL. We all grew up in the same area, uh, so it's just – uh, really unique area, uh, you know, unfortunately not the best area, but, you know, uh, a lot of us were fortunate enough to make it out and, and to do mm. pretty well for ourselves. Well, so, that's amazing. So in regards to your origin, where's your, your parents from? Is there... so, yeah, actually from Virginia, yeah, from the oh, Carolinas. Wow. My, my dad is from uh, North Carolina, which is further south, and my mom was born in uh, Germantown, Philadelphia, which is, you know, close to north, uh, northern, closer to New York. So, yeah. Okay. Cool, cool. You can hear that I'm a Londoner. Have you have you ever been to London? I, I haven't, but my wife and I were planning to come soon. We we have yeah uh, yeah yeah we have we have some plans. We we got to get some some uh, some touring on. And and uh, my sister lives in Amsterdam, so I gotta oh, make my yeah. way over there to her. Yeah, so yeah, we're looking forward to it, and especially okay. with the, the project uh, being out too. Okay, that sounds cool. So, what was you like as a little boy? Tell me everything. Uh, what would you like as a child? I, I, you know, when I was younger, my, my friends used to say, you know, well, man, you're such a deep thinker. You're, you know, you're so philosophical. And I didn't really think about it, you know, at the time. But I, I can, looking back, I can say I was always very introspective, you know, mm -hmm. al always a very deep thinker, just always uh, pondering about life and my next step and mm -hmm. where I would end up. So uh, I, I would say very, very conscious you know, for, for the most part, you know, mm -hmm. even as a child, uh, and, and I, uh, was always active in sports, uh, in the area that I grew up played, you know, football, you know, track basketball. So did a lot mm -hmm. of that was, was, you know, fairly good at it. You know, and I had an older brother who was a, uh, excellent mentor to me to help me stay on the right track. So that is important. Know. Not everyone has that. That's really good. Yeah. Yeah. I, I, I was very fortunate. Mm -hmm. I, I, I was very fortunate. And, uh, you know, things, things worked out well, you know. That's good. So that's you describing yourself. Yeah. Um, or as, a, as a small child, you yeah. would say, how would your family and friends describe you now? <laughs> that's a good question. I, I see my, my, my oldest son just logged on, which is, <laughs> that's a very good question. Then I'm going to ask my wife you describe it. Go for a minute. Mm -hmm. You know, hopefully, you know, I, I think I think my kids would probably say that I'm uh, uh, rigid, you know, kind of, uh, you know, uh, not as flexible or as, you know, as they would like me to be. Me. Yeah. But but, you know, but as a parent, you know, you, it's a different thing when you're trying to deal with your kids. Mm. Uh, I, I think, you know, um, but they would I think everyone would probably describe me as a very driven and focused person. Um, because, you know, once I kind of set my mind to a particular goal or a task, you know, no matter what seems to happen, I seem to, you know, really focus in on it and get it done. That's a good thing. So that's how people would describe you. But how would you describe yourself? You know, a work in progress. You know, That's my word. I always say that about myself. Yeah, yeah. definitely a work in progress. And, uh, you know, I'm just, you know, definitely not perfect, can, can see my flaws. And, and when I do make a mistake, I, you know, I often try to be, you know, humble enough to say, hey, I'm sorry and, and never let anything keep me, you know, separated from, you know, people that I love because of, you know, some, some stupidity on my end, you know. That I totally get. I totally empathize with that. I'm glad you said that because um, I always find that when I ask people who they are, um, or to share what they think of themselves. They only say things on a high A1 level. And I always think, really? You no. know, so I'm glad you are the only one other than me. Like, well, this is, you know, I'm like this. Um, people are always like, I'm this, I'm that, I'm a trilampus. I'm, I'm like, well, where's the negative? Say one yeah, thing. Yeah, yeah. You know, yeah. so you kept it real. I like that. I mean, I have to. Like, like I mean, to me, you know, if, if you only, I mean, first of all, you know, self, so, uh, actualization and realization that's a slippery thing it's kind of really hard to, to really understand you know how you are perceived by other people so I think you know when you're trying to judge that I mean your scope is totally off the mark you know mm -hmm. so for me you know I, I just try to 
I always look at the mistakes that I make with people and try to, you know, just say, okay, I, I see why I erred in judgment mm -hmm. or my attitude or my reaction. So let me yeah. focus on me. But it's never about other people. To me, you, you lose you lose the whole purpose of the experience when you try to, you know, default to someone else. Mm -hmm. That's good. That's good. So just to recap for those who just joined, this is Mr. Terrence Thompson. He is a musician, producer, singer, songwriter. He does it all. But tonight he doesn't want to focus. He does not want to focus too much on his brand. He wants to talk about um, basically success and um, why or does it change people or is it the people that changes around those who are successful? Yeah. Um, interesting topic. So can you tell me a little bit about what inspired you to want to discuss that topic in particular? Yeah, um, for me, it, it's a topic that hits really close to home, you know. Is that wifey uh, saying how amazing you are? <laughs> yes. Hello, wifey. <laughs> I'm about to read the comment shortly. <laughs> my, intuition, my intuition, you see that? Mm -hmm. <laughs> so... <laughs> Yeah, it's, it's okay. But yeah, you know, for me, it, it is uh, close to home because, you know, a couple of different reasons. I, I've mm -hmm. actually worked with people before they became, I would say, quote unquote, famous, you know, ah. or successful. Uh, I mean, had a really, really uh, uh, played an integral role in their success and helping mm -hmm. them get to the next level. But also for myself personally, you know, my, my own success, you know, wh whether it be, you know, uh, graduating from high school, going to college, going to grad school or whatever, uh, having a great job, you know, uh, 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 getting to a place in life that a lot of people never get to. Yeah. You know, and, and mm -hmm. so for me, you know, I mean, I, I think it's a great topic because, you know, I mean, success is relative. You know what I mean? I mean, mm -hmm. it's just, it, it really is relative. It's how you define it, you know I mean? I'm it, so it's, glad you said that. I was yeah. going to say on success it's unfortunate because it's almost like we externalize so much in regards to who says we're successful, right, what you can right. success to be. So I'm glad you said that. It's very it's personal, isn't it? It, it is. It means it's very really? personal. To, to me, if, if you're mm -hmm. a, a college kid, you know, who just dreams of, you know, uh, becoming a, a, an attorney or like my son, who's a, a, a high school athlete, who's dreaming of Amazing. becoming, you know, a college athlete. That, I mean, mm -hmm. that's success. I mean, he's defining his success mm -hmm. and, and mm -hmm. no one else can actually, you know, determine that. Now, what what happens once that person achieves that goal is something totally different. I mean, mm -hmm. you know, I mean, what will you become a different person because, you know, you were afforded an opportunity that other yeah. people weren't afforded, mm -hmm. you know, or, you know, I mean, or, or will you remain humble or will you remain grounded? So I think it's a great broad, broad topic. It's very ambiguous, so let's very, get into it. Very much it. so, yeah. But interestingly, before we really get into it, I was, I was thinking about this subject today. And do you know that out of all the subjects I've done in the last year, this was weirdly my most challenging. Like, what am I going to ask him? Yeah, it, weirdly, because it was so yeah. like non-specific, but yet specific. It's ambiguous. And I thought, okay, here's how I'm going to flow. But interestingly enough... Um, Okay, so let me go straight into what are your personal experiences or observations of people that may have um, changed or people changing around them? Have you observed? Have you experienced it? Absolutely. I mean, I, you know, I, I could say, you know, um, for myself, you know, uh, with, with people that are close to me, uh, uh, close relatives, you know, mm -hmm. you know I'm not going to. I'm not going to name names, no, you know, of course but, but, not. but I, will, I will say that, you know, it's amazing how people will come across as though mm -hmm. they're trying to be genuine and, and, and compassionate and all of these wonderful things. Mm -hmm. But in the end, you kind of really see that it, it comes down to self. Mm -hmm. In the end, you know, what I've seen is that people are about themselves and, and very mm -hmm. few people are, are willing to share the limelight with anyone, you know, mm -hmm. I mean, you know, it, it, you know, I, I can tell you stories. I, I mean, even recently I've reached out to artists that I, I admire that I've gone to their concerts. I've attended their concerts and said, Hey, wow. I would love, I would love to be able to shoot some music your way and nothing, no, not even acknowledgement or anything. And I know <laughs> definitively that they got the messages. And then so it, may I, is that through social media? You've, you've kind of followed that then. Yeah, but but also through through direct channels also. 
Do you know, it, it's, I mean, I said this to my little brother, let me share this with you. Unfortunately, numbers rule. So maybe if you had 20, 30K followers, they would have responded to you. And honestly, it, this is what I find amazing. I'm going to share this with you also. Um, you know, we talk about supporting our own businesses. It's, you know, the new thing for the last how many years, support black business or whatever it is. But honestly speaking, if you do not have certain numbers, they're not even going to look at your page. But if you have the numbers, then suddenly you're seen as maybe influential and worthy of, I've had people on this platform that's got over 40K followers and I feel like I'm blessed. Right. But yeah, right. they talk to me like I'm blessing them. And I probably had about a hundred and something followers at the time. And I'm like, right. have you really, this is what I mean by true people though. So that's what it is. Maybe if you had a name already, they'll be like, oh my God, he can block my next album. Right. Yeah. But, and but it's, unfair. That, it's unfair. It's unfair. Because everyone's got to start from somewhere. Yeah. But it, but it's, I mean, it's, it's, it's not, I mean, it is unfair in a sense to them. It's not unfair to me because here's okay. the thing, because here's the thing, like the reality of it is, is that, you know, I'm fortunate that my life is, you know, uh, I'm not a celebrity, nor do I want to be, you know, I, I'm a, a producer, songwriter, you know, I, I would rather be in the studio behind, you know, behind the scenes. But, mm -hmm. you know, for me, I, I just think that it's unfortunate for them that they're trapped and they've already fallen into that trap. And, wow. it, and, it, is, and it is, a, and it is a trap because here's the thing, you know, what, what mm -hmm. happens, it, what happens, let's say next year, if you see me walking across the stage, grabbing two or three Grammys, I mean, mm -hmm. then, I mean, then are you think you're going to reach out to me and I'm going to go, Oh, oh yeah, my man. Yeah, oh, they yeah. will be able to do a collaborate. But, but, but at, that point, at, at that point, it's too late. And, and that's mm -hmm. the point that I'm making. We miss our own opportunities because we get caught up in ourselves. You know, and, and, and you know, I, and I wasn't asking, hey, collaborate with me because I need you because I, you know, mm -hmm. I need to figure out a way to pay my rent or my mortgage or whatever. Mm -hmm. But I'm just saying, hey, I think we'll be a great collaboration. But but I can say this is that, you know, I'm fortunate enough that I have, you know, you know, I have a production credit on Michael Jackson. I have production credit on Monifa. I have, you know, some small movie credit. Mm -hmm. And then I have my project now, which I'm, you know, extremely happy about. But but it's mm -hmm. not just it's not really about the music. It's just about people being real and and that's the thing that we struggle with so much in the whole celebrity thing so i i just think a lot of people miss out on their own opportunities because i like how you think but on the flip side let me say this which is also truth they have a billion people in their inbox every day and i guess it has to be intuition that says which one shall i reply to i'm gonna be real if i holler at oprah winfrey oprah auntie oprah i'm the next army up and coming girl like look what i do is she really gonna get that message there's billions so I, I, have to I, say, I, I, I agree with that how is she gonna that. know intuition would lead her to me that's the only thing out of the billions of people that's messaging her so i, I, I agree with that but it's, it's scale know. too it's scale and scope so okay. if, you, if you if you're saying oprah absolutely but here's the thing that's she my has auntie oprah people, in my fantasy <laughs> she has people to deal with that right i mean mm. she, she would have people to deal with that if, mm. if you're if you're a, a i'm gonna say a tier two artist i mean you don't wow, probably have people mm. i mean let's say even if you have 20 or thirty thousand followers and you, i mean mm. and, and it's and it's and it's not about that that part of it but it's just mm -hmm. about you know stay connected to what's real you know and and i think you know I think you'll be more sustainable. And I think that's the thing about the music industry. You know, to, a lot of people get caught up in the industry itself. Yeah. That's why you have so many one hit, you know, one hit wonders and they get here today and they're gone tomorrow. So, uh, you know, that's how I kind of see it. But, you know, but that's the whole thing about personality and how it uh, impacts you. Interestingly enough, also, I'm thinking about the very meaning of what we're speaking about. And I'm saying to myself, I don't think someone can predict how they're going to turn out. But because we see so many other people that's gone before us, and as it, I guess we can use it as, I don't know, inspiration. Like, for example, you could not predict. This is my, this is my philosophy, yeah? Before I became a mother, no book could predict how the journey would feel. It's impossible. Right. I, I yeah, agree I with that part of it. Out. I can read the books, I can watch my grandma, my mother, but the actual journey, the challenge, the spiritual, emotional, psychological, I have to go through that, sometimes make errors, catch yourself. Okay, so what I'm saying is, it could be you that's super grounded, and one moment you catch yourself. 
for someone like you, it sounds real grounded. So if you did, I believe you'd come back real quick. Well, I mean, I mean, to, to say, okay, well, I mean, we're, we're talking about, we're talking about in totality, you know, we're not talking about a snapshot. Just music. Right, yeah. right, a snapshot. I mean, we're talking mm -hmm. about who you are day to day, you know, when, mm -hmm. when you're mm -hmm. not on social media, you know, when you're not, you know, don't, I mean, who are you day to day? And, the filter, and, the filters. Right, mm -hmm. right. And, and, and what I'm saying is that, I mean, I think, I think we can determine that. I mean, I, I think the best predictor of future behavior is past behavior. You know, I mean, that's, that's you know, that, and, and, and I think if, if, if you were driven by materialism and a goal to be to be seen and to be acknowledged and, you know, if you want that, when you get that, then that's your God or that's the thing that you're going to serve or whatever it is. That's your, that's yeah, your, I agree your, on that. That's your drug. But but if you if you just if your passion is to create whatever your passion is and this is I'll tell anyone this. You know, if you get into the music industry to make money and to be famous, you failed already, you know, mm -hmm. and that's mm -hmm. in anything in life. I mean, you know, yeah. you, whatever your career is, do what you love and what makes you happy, because, you know, when you do that, it's not work. You know, I mean, you know, mm -hmm. and, and, and you don't have that pressure on you. But uh, I, I just don't I think that too many times we we set out. I mean, we've already put our, our focus on. Let me get paid. Let me get the bag. Let me get the house. Let me get the clothes. Let me get the chicks. And mm -hmm. I mean, you're, I mean, that's a recipe for disaster because, you know, you're going to get distracted mm -hmm. and it's going to take you off course. Mm. Do you think that's the air of, much, of immaturity or just being exposed to too much MTV base? I think it's, <laughs> I think it's, a, I think it's a lot of, uh, of everything. I think, you know, and it, even mm -hmm. this, this, the, the question, the topic that we're discussing I think it represents so many different things. I mean, it's just, you just can't paint it with one broad stroke, you know, yeah. and just say, it's this or that. It's really an individual thing, but I think it's, right. it's, it's a question that people should ask themselves and say, hey, you know I mean? What am I really about? I mean, I mean, because mm -hmm. in the end, I mean, your celebrity won't mean anything. I mean, trust me, when, you know, I've seen many people that were like multimillionaires that are broke now. You know? Okay, so all right. So let me ask you this. Let's go back to go forward. How long have you been in the industry for? Because you're a newbie, right? So how long have you been in, um, in the industry? No, I, actually, I, I'm I'm really not a newbie. I mean, this okay. is like the first first time that I've I've put out an independent project at this level. That's okay. getting you know, okay. uh, it's getting you know some recognition. You know, I would say internationally at this point, which is really cool because mm -hmm. I've never been a part. You right. know, in um, terms of vocalist. You're newbie to that, no? Well, or have well you... as as a producer, songwriter, right. everything, you know, you know, and, okay. and putting my brand out there and selling mm -hmm. that. But um, you know, so so I've been in the industry. I mean, I, I did my first record when I was, oh man, in high school. You know, mm -hmm. a long, long time. So I've I've been in and out of the industry. But as a producer mm -hmm. and a songwriter, I mean, I have my name on records with with well known artists or producers that didn't even do the records. <laughs> the records that I okay. produce. So, so I've been around the block so, and, you know, and I speak from experience and I speak from um, someone who, who knows that, that path that a lot of people that mm -hmm. get into this industry, a lot of the darkness that they have to endure to get to where they're trying to get to. So let's just recap for those who's just joined. Good evening, guys. This is Mr. Terrence Thompson. He is a basically musician, producer, singer, songwriter, but today he'd like to focus on um, the topic of success. Why does people change when they become successful or does people around those who are successful change? Yeah? <laughs> so just to recap, so what was your initial experience when you first entered the industry and how did they receive you as a new newbie? Let's talk about the psychology of people at that point. Yeah, I mean, you know, for anyone that's ever gotten very close to the industry, you know, you, you quickly realize that, I mean, is there's so much superficiality, you know, I mean, mm -hmm. it's just, it's all smoke and mirrors, you know, mm -hmm. you know, mm -hmm. I, I, this, I think this is the perfect way to sum it up. I think this is a great little analogy or story. It's, mm -hmm. it's like someone telling you, Hey man, I work for Sony records. Let me put you on. Right. And mm -hmm. you, you're, you're reaching out to this guy every day for two or three years only to find out, that the guy worked in the mail room at Sony records, you know, it's a big difference, you know I mean? You know, or he worked at, at the security uh, desk at Sony records, you know, people put on because everyone wants to be, I'm not gonna say everyone, but the mm -hmm. majority of the people that I ran across 
in the music industry that I've dealt with, I mean, they had they weren't really happy. I mean, I think there's a, a, a mm -hmm. small percentage of people that are truly happy at what they do. You know, mm -hmm. I mean, it's a struggle to get into business. It's a struggle to stay in the business. And then you have this image and this facade and all of these things mm -hmm. that you have to, you know, you have to put up. Yeah. And, and, you know, a lot of these artists are struggling. I mean, they're struggling to, to pay to live day to day. And that's a that's a scary thought, you know, I mean, for for people that may look at these celebrities and, you know, they, they're getting all these great angles and they're flashing these cars or whatever that that's, you know, and that's great and that's cool. But for the most part, a lot of people are struggling and, and it's, mm -hmm. it's like a um, it's a vicious cycle that, you know, you, you, you have to live up to this, this lifestyle mm. to, to fit in. But for me, it was, it was something that I quickly realized that I didn't want to be too close to the industry. I just wanted to yeah, do music, you for know? Yeah, sure. You're clearly mm. grounded. So as the newbie at the time, I would love to know how they received you. For those who were more established than you at the time, yeah. when you first entered, how did they receive you? Did you get the warmth or was it like, so I got I got a great I think a pretty good story. So I, I'm tell me I'm I like, want to hear all you know I'm a I'm a young guy right out of high school and and you know some of you guys on the you know may remember this group called Guy you know which was mm -hmm. a huge guy a huge group in the time mm -hmm. uh, the guy that that spearheaded the group was uh, Teddy Riley one mm -hmm. of my you know favorite yeah. producers of all time. So uh, Damian Hall, who's Aaron Hall's younger brother, was really good friends with uh, one of my good friends. And uh, okay. Damian Hall went to college in Virginia with my good friend. So Damian hung out with us and Damian, um, he ended up as a member of Guy. So we were like, okay, we were, uh, my buddy and I, we were like this new rap group and we we're like, okay, Damian is in Guy. You know, now Damian can help us out, get us a record deal. And eventually the short story was that one day, uh, me, my brother, and my buddy, we're at home looking at BET, and the guy comes on the uh, television. The host says, hey, next up, the new video by a uh, guy. So we're like, okay, this is going to be good. This is going to be dope. So the video comes on, and my brother looks at me. And he says, oh, my God, dude, he just stole your track. And, yeah, so Teddy Riley had actually jacked my beat. And, and for me, instead of being upset about it, I was actually, like, pumped. I was like, yeah, yeah, he stole my. It's track. a compliment directly. Right. Yeah, but it it, it was uh, he validated me at that moment, even without knowing it. You know, he probably figured, okay, I got him, and and he validated me in that moment when I said, okay, I can compete. You know, what I mean, because that's the first thing you want to know as a producer or as a musician. You really want to know, okay, am I good enough to even be in this industry? Because you hear no so much that even if you're dope, even if you're dope, mm -hmm. you don't really believe it you know, mm -hmm. until you get your break. So fast forward some 10 years later, I produced this uh, rapper, this local rapper in Richmond. Uh, she met a guy in, in a store and the guy said, hey, by the way, I'm working with Teddy Riley and whatever, whatever. And, you know, lo and behold, they took the girl down to the studio down in Virginia Beach, played her demo. Teddy was blown away. And I get a phone call like, hey, hey, Terrence, this is Teddy. And I'm like, before we go any further, you know who this is, right? And he's like, yeah. And I'm like, you know, this is the kid that you stole the track from. Oh, so I put this is the Teddy Riley, right? Absolutely. Yeah, yeah. You can. I mean, I'm on the record with him on the Michael Jackson record. That's the record that, and no, uh, Monifa as well. I would have actually yeah. been on more records with him, but we we had some just disagreements with business stuff because, I mean, you know, I'm just gonna call it out. I'm actually planning on doing a documentary where I'm gonna out a lot of my personal experiences because mm -hmm. you know it's not about me being wronged i mean trust me i'm not bitter you know at all i mean mm -hmm. I, i've had a great life and i got a great situation but i just think that people can learn from it you know don't don't be so willing to like sell your soul to 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 get on because i'm gonna tell you once they're done with you they're done with you mm -hmm. you know um and that's the that's the reality but i dealt with teddy on numerous occasions i worked with chauncey uh, from Black Street, uh, he was producing uh, a group. I uh, was working with them, you know. So I've had, I've had, you know, some some experiences. But probably as we go back to this subject of do people actually change because of success? This but, is but one one second, T. Yes, can you yes. just like there's a puzzle missing that I'm, yes. I, I I need to know about. 
So you met up with Riley, done more, obviously work with him. But what happened to the stolen track? How did oh, you nothing. Know? I mean, that, oh, that was that was nothing. So, but I mean, did he I say was... anything? Did he admit to? Did he apologize? Did he no, actually, anything? actually, Damien told me. Damien Hall told me and my brother and my buddy said, "Hey, what can I say? Teddy, uh, Teddy stole a track. That's what he Jeez. does. What can I say? But but it gets even better. So let's fast forward some years, right?" So uh, I talked about the, uh, the female artist that I produce. And uh, Teddy Riley invited me to come down to Future Records. I'm like, okay, let me go down, grab one of my buddies, and we go down. And as soon as I go into the studio, I see all of these young producers in the studio. Well, I, mean, I didn't know they were producers, but I just knew they were young guys. And I'm like, okay, these guys are like me. They're like some young producer that's coming down. It's in all Teddy and his amazing studio and this giant ass plaque of Michael Jackson, you know, the only plaque on the wall in the studio that mm. commemorating, I guess, the 19 million, however many cells he had. But so I go in and I, I start asking questions. I'm saying, hey, first question I ask, hey, let me ask you, uh, what record did you produce? And these guys started spewing off records that they produced that Teddy's name was on. And I was like, wow. So I, I, I met the guy that did uh, No Diggity, I met mm -hmm. the guy that produced Rump Shaker. Actually, if I'm not mistaken, I believe Pharrell and Chad of the Neptunes produced Rump Shaker. If I'm not mistaken, I think they did it. But of course, you know, Teddy, Teddy was, you know, and I'm not I'm not trying to out Teddy. But all. Teddy a little bit of a snake. He ain't really as dope oh as we all God. Think, yeah, that was the industry. Wow. Listen. That, I mean, that, I mean that, how's he gotten away with the openness of doing that is what's stunning me. Well, let me let me say this to you. If 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 someone comes to you, let's say if you're a uh, you're struggling, starving artist, right. and someone comes to you and says, hey, um, I'll give you $10,000 for this track. Man, And you, <laughs> $10,000 is a lot of money, you know? Mm -hmm. But but you're not <laughs> thinking about, okay, my publishing, my rights, you know, my royalties, my mechanicals. You're not thinking about it. You're just thinking about, okay, let me get this 10 racks. I could pay to pay some bills, you know, I could buy a car or whatever the case may be. Is this what is this what happened to you? Did you get no, like a no, lump sum? Oh, no, no, right. no, okay. no, no. I, I got in his pocket. So, you know, one thing about me, you know, I, I'm a shrewd business person. But clearly you didn't have the rights for your track. That's how you managed to do that, right? Oh, oh no, well that that was actually here's the thing about it. It was a track that I sampled anyway. So I really didn't have <laughs> I didn't I didn't own it. You know? So that he had to That's take that funny. Up with, he had to take that up with Lynn Collins and, and James Brown. So that wasn't, <laughs> that wasn't on me. So, so That's it was really, funny. right, right. So I, but, but <laughs> as we went into it down the road, now the, the, the track that I talked about that was on Michael Jackson's project, Heaven Can Wait, we actually recorded that uh, music for um, Genuine. And, uh, you know, he ran out of, uh, he ran over budget, so he couldn't do it. So it ended up, uh, a friend of mine pitched it to Teddy who was working on the Invincible CD for Michael Jackson at the time. Mm -hmm. And, you know, Michael heard it and he loved it. But, you know, they didn't do anything to that track. You could, if you listen to the record, you can actually hear the other, the original singer's reference track, his background vocals in it. The female, this guy named um, Teron Bill and another lady. And, and it was just, you know, but that's the industry. I mean, people want to, they want to take what you create and say they did it. And, and this is the great litmus test that I, I could tell you, I would use. You know, some people might ask, well, how, how, how come Teddy Riley, how, I mean, or, or any producer like him, how can a person be so great that all of a sudden, you know, you fall off? I mean, it does happen. It get, I mean, that's going to happen to any and everyone, you know. But you look at their track record. You can't mm -hmm. go from doing New Jack Swing, producing New Jack Swing tracks to No Diggity to Rump Shaker to some of those other records that that degree of difficulty does not exist i mean mm -hmm. those are true hip-hop producers that knew how to chop samples all mm -hmm. of that stuff their, their approach to the making those beats were totally different so that that right there is a good indication to say okay yeah he didn't do those records i mean even the record he's on with me i asked him to say hey ted i want you to play some keys over the record uh it's a, it's a record on monifa's home cd mm -hmm. and he was like nah we'll leave it like it is but he still put his name right beside it and said, hey, you know, you know, it is That is, is terrible. So let me ask you one more question before we go and check out some of the comments. Yeah? Yeah. yeah. What inspired you towards the industry direction in the first place? So I, I actually was the, the high school kid that was 
DJing and, and you know, making beats on Casio mm -hmm. keyboards and tearing up my mom's turntables and all that <laughs> good stuff. <laughs> so, you know, it was always there. And then I have, I have someone that's in my family that was like a really, really big time DJ. And he, he, he sold a ton of records. He was signed to major labels. So he was the person who actually allowed me to go in the studio and record mm -hmm. my first record in a major studio. And then, mm -hmm. you know, I got to go out with him and tour with him and support him and back him up. But music was always like a, a passion of mine. You know, it was always there. But I started off as a DJ, you know, uh, making beats and as a kind of rapper, hip hop type guy and started sampling. And, I, you know, just got to the point where I was like, hey, you know what? Let me start dabbling around with the keys a little bit, doing little bass lines and stuff. And then I just say, you know what? I'm not sampling anymore. So <laughs> it was it was a maturation process for me. Uh, but I, I love music. I mean, it's always been. What genre like, do you create? You know, actually, I've done some of everything. I've done I've done uh, some pop. Uh, I've done um, a lot of hip hop, jazz. Right now, my project now uh, is primarily I would say some jazz fusion, neo. I've done. Oh, that's of music. so neat. I love, I love all sound. types of music. I love everything. You know, what I mean, if, so what if, kind of people do you tend to meet? Because obviously, you know, for an example, if you were a dance hall artist, you may primarily meet purely that. So, according right. to the genre you make, what type of like other genre musicians do you tend to meet in regards to the very subject we're talking about? Like, what kind of individuals do you meet? All, all types, to be honest. I, I mm -hmm. was chopping it up with the guy last night that. You know, he, I mean, I, with a guy in Spain, you know, chopping it up with him, uh, with another guy, you know, uh, further up north. Mm -hmm. and, and they're completely, they're on totally, completely opposite ends of what I do. But for me, because I love like music. So myself, mm -hmm. I, I, I would, I would first label myself as a producer. And this is how, what I would say. I could, I feel as though at the stage that I am, you know, the grace of God, I mean, just being real about it, I just feel as though, from a creative standpoint, I can go in, in this. I could go into the studio with any artist. Now, maybe not, maybe not a a, a, a rap artist or a hip hop artist because that's kind of you know beyond me. You know, at this point mm -hmm. in the stage of what I do. But I mean, if as it relates to music and and song and and the interpretation and inflection and feeling, I, I think I can go in with anyone. And and it, you know, and then that's what about the grind. Absolutely. Anything. I mean, a, a, anything. <laughs> music is music. I mean, it's, it's like, this is the way I see it. It's, so as a producer, this is mm -hmm. how I see it. It's like saying, okay, we're going to do Transformer 30, <laughs> you know, but instead of using this director, we're going to bring in this guy. It's the same, it's the same, you know, movie, same thing. It's just a different director. So I'm just yeah. going to come and yeah. give my interpretation on it. And sometimes you're pleasantly surprised. So like with, with the project that I just did, you know, I, I mean, my project was basically me playing out music and writing music on my keyboard and recording it and just different things and said, okay, man, if I had a band, this is how things would kind of go. And that's um, the name of your um, right, project, right. isn't it? it? Yes, it is. And, and I ended up meeting these amazing musicians from all over, you know, uh, two bro actually uh, three guys from Haiti, you know, another guy from, you know, uh, the same area, from D.C. area and uh, a couple of other guys, but just great people that came in and they, they, I mean, you know, I'm sure what I was doing was totally different, maybe different from what they were used mm -hmm. to. But man, when you hear how it marries together, it's just like, it's, it's really dynamic, cool. Musical yeah. dynamics. Yeah, mm -hmm. Very cool. Well, you know what? Why don't you take a moment to smoke on a cigar, drink some water or wine while I check out the comments? Okay, absolutely. <laughs> it's Friday, so we can turn up, right? Okay, good. I've got water, I've got tea, and I don't have my big-ass glass anymore, but I've got this. Yeah, I, I thought you were going to drown in that. <laughs> my gin and tonic, just in case I want to like be diverse. <laughs> so, hi, guys. Hi, everyone. Thank you for joining us. I'm going to wave back to everybody that's on the live. For those who's just joined, this is Mr. Terence Thompson, musician, uh, producer, singer, songwriter, and we are talking about the dynamics and psychology of success and how it changes us, so changes those who are around us. So let me, I've done my highs, let me go to some comments if I can see it. Okay. 
Um, Juice, hello, beautiful Empress. Thank you very much. <laughs> um, let me see. And Instagram is so funny. As you flick down the comments, it just, it just disappears sometimes. Let's see. Okay, let me not press onto it too hard. Let me say hello. Hang on a minute. Is that the Ike Thompson? Yeah, that that's that's my son. Oh, the son. Yeah. yeah, he says yeah. facts in the beginning of the conversation. Sorry that I'm going back a little bit now. No worries, uh, no worries. He says facts, but overall, real good guy, real determined on your goals, basically. Mm -hmm. And hi, mermaid. Um, wifey says hello, Yaz. <laughs> Amazing man. Why you keep? Okay, hang on a minute. Can you see the comments on your side? I don't know why they keep. It seems that it, it, it it's on my I can. side. I, I'm actually scrolling back down to them now. I always uh, find, I press onto it and it runs away from me and comes back. Hang on a minute. Hang on a minute. Let me go back. I don't know if you can see me scrolling back on this side. I can't see you scrolling, but I, okay. I can see the comments. Instagram is, Instagram's been, I don't know, I've been playing up lately. Hang on a minute. Let me go back. Here's your son's comment. Um, all right, exactly in every aspect, great husband, father, and always trying to help others. That's your wife. Um, hello. Um, let me see. Back to your son. Um, numbers or a blue check, they'll be all over you. Hmm, I wonder what that means. What son's saying? What does that relate to? Do you know? I, I can't keep up with the slang. He's going to have to break that down for me. <laughs> can, you, can you break it down, son, please? Numbers or a blue check? <laughs> They'll be all over you. Well, ah, I guess I maybe what he's saying is that if you got numbers, they'll be all over you. So, oh yes, for yeah, sure, that, yeah, for sure. Yeah. If I had twenty k, the people up inbox would be inboxing me. That's right, for sure. Right. That's for sure. Let me see. Sending some more waves. Serenity, hi, Miss Walton. How you doing? And Crown Jewels, and Elaine. Okay, I think that's it. Okay, and now once I bring the, here we go. Oh, that's it. See, this comments that are hiding. Look, I found some more. <laughs> this Instagram is crazy. Okay, so um, Sandy, what's up, friend? She says, so if someone, so if someone have you, wait, if someone have you some lyrics, okay, mm -hmm. yep. would, you, would you interpret it? Would your interpretation flow with them? Yeah, I, I get, I get the question. All right, uh, and. Uh, uh, Absolutely. I, I mean, it depends on like first, you know, if if the person has an idea, you know, in, in right. mind, that's one thing. Or if they just want to give it and say, hey, OK, what? how would you interpret it? Yeah. Right. And Sandy's saying, what? No gin. Turn up. Look, I've got gin and tonic right here. <laughs> I've had a very sensitive wow. kind of two days. So I decided I may sip later. But for now, I'm having my ML tea. I'm being all zen and shit. OK. Yeah. <laughs> Sandy, behave yourself. I don't know what are you drinking, Sandy. What's going on? We go turn up a little later. She's like, she's probably thinking it's a bit late for summer. She hasn't fucking turned up yet. It's Friday. <laughs> Let me get rid of the comments off the screen as much as I can. I don't know. There we go. All right. So, um, in your experience so far, have you? Because I'm going to go. I know it's about success, but it makes sense that I ask you elements around. Absolutely. The, um, the industry about talking too much about your project and the yeah. reason why guys because um terence here has his own project coming out and we are waiting for him to come back and discuss it all but tonight he wants to reserve that for the big bang yeah and talk about the industry in general yeah yeah okay so <laughs> wifey says love it <laughs> yeah so um in your experience um what type, I mean, in regards to direct changes, I know you kind of said elements of relatives or whatever, but can you give us more specifics of yeah. what changes have been with the other family or people that are celebrities or in the industry? Yeah. Or so so I, I had a uh, production company some years ago and, uh, you know, we, we were uh, just really starting out. And, you know, we were fortunate. We, we ended up placing mm -hmm. the, the five tracks that I, I talked about, the one with Michael Jackson and three with Monifa mm -hmm. and one with another group that was signed to Atlantic uh, Records uh, called 8th Ave. So, I mean, we did this within probably like a 
small window of time, which, you know, it's just, it, you know, it's one of those things, you know, it's feast to famine, you know, we were not getting any work then all of a sudden, you know, we were getting work. And just in that short period of time, you know, I, I was always the business man of, you know, of everything I've been involved with, you know, I, I drove the conversations, I drove the meetings, I, I closed the deals, you know, I mean, it was just, that was me, that was my forte. But we had other musicians and other producers, and now I'm going to start just talking about names. Okay, I was going to say, yeah, so so so, baby, so perfect. Yeah, yeah. So one guy uh, who was a, a world-renowned drummer, his name is Nate Smith. So mm -hmm. Nate Smith was a part of my um, production company um, called the Affiliates. Nate is actually the the actual producer who produced the Having Can Wait record on Michael Jackson. So you know, it was it was I was the executive producer. I actually. Uh, booked the studio time, did the recording session, tracked it, all of that good stuff, you know, all the stuff that the executive producers do, et cetera. But anyway, uh, you know, so, uh, you know, we, we placed this record on Michael Jackson. Well, it mm -hmm. wasn't actually, it wasn't on Michael Jackson, so I take that back. We placed this record on Genuine. I, I pay Nate his, his, you know, amount that he's supposed to get paid. Some time goes by, and then uh, the record lands on Michael's desk or whatever. And then th they question Nate and says, hey, who, own who owns the record? Who owns the masters? And then he tells him that I own them. And he said, well, were you paid? And Nate lied and said he wasn't paid and he was paid. And so that was so. So here's the thing. So he lied about not getting paid, which, in fact, uh, uh, prevented me from having my platinum plaque on the rec on the wall right oh. now. But so long story short, my attorney, we had to put an injunction on the record mm. because I, I actually uh, videotaped the recording session and they ended up paying me the royalties and I still get the residuals to this day for it. But that was the very first moment of someone who had not, I mean, and Nate is an amazing, I mean, I am a Nate Smith fan. Like, I love this guy as a producer, wow. as a drummer. He's, he's an amazing talent. He comes from Virginia, from I think Chesapeake, Virginia. He's, you know, he's a Virginia boy. But he's a dope, dope producer. But for Snakey. the life of me, right, for the life of me, when you know I handed you a check for $5,000 and they ask you if you got paid and you say, no, he didn't pay me. I mean, that was the moment right there where he could have, you know, said, okay, let me do right by this guy. Mm -hmm. So he didn't. So that was the first situation. Now I'll, I'll fast forward to one that's probably a little bit more, even more detailed than that. So mm -hmm. if you've ever watched the show American Idol, uh, mm -hmm, there was a mm -hmm. guy that was on the show some years ago uh, named Elliot Yamin. So Elliot Yamin is from, he's actually from Richmond, Virginia. He's actually from San Diego, but okay. he grew up, he grew up in, in Richmond, Virginia. So Elliot, you know, uh, used to, I mean, I put him in the studio, was working with him. And one day he comes to my house and he says, hey, guess what? I'm thinking about going on American Idol. I'm like, great. Let me read the let me read the agreement. And I'm like, okay, I think you'll do well. You won't win it, but you'll do well. You said he, that. Yeah, I knew I knew he wasn't gonna win because he wasn't as polished, but his raw vocal talent would mm -hmm. at least land him in the top three or four. Mm. And he, he and he finished third. Oh, so wow. so Elliot was on the show and I'm I'm buying him clothes, I'm sending him money, I'm taking care of him. I actually flew out to LA to go, you know, uh, be there for Friends Day, whatever, when he was on the show. I never did anything with any expectations of that he would, you know, uh, uh, you do anything for me. Him, no, I, 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 wasn't, I wasn't managing him anything. I, I was actually somebody who was taking care of someone that I considered a little brother. Okay. You know, like a little brother. I was Mental. someone who, okay. right, right, well, put him, put, putting him on records, developing him. You know, I mean, he was mm. calling me, asking me for song selections while he was on the show right. and I'm walking him through it and just helping him out. So, you know, we get, we get to this pivotal moment where, you know, he, he's supposed to come through for this, uh, uh, like this event that I sponsored for him in the city. You know, when you come home, you come back mm -hmm. to your home city, he came to his home city. I booked this amazing venue, people there from all over the country. His mom is there with me, his brother, oh. his girlfriend, everybody's there with me. This guy calls me the day of the event. I mean, actually, before he's supposed to show up, and he's literally across the street at the Coliseum, he could have walked over to the event and say, said he's not going to come. So, of course, I had to give everybody their money back and all that stuff. 
And this was a guy that I had done so much for. What was his motive? Did he, did he elaborate? No, he, he couldn't elaborate. He flaked. That's what people do. And this wow. is where I'm going with it. The majority I appreciate of people, this. Wow. Listen, this is what I'm going to tell you. It's, it's, it's like this. The music industry is just like everything else. It's a microcosm of the world. If you have one friend, if you find one real friend in this world, you found plenty. Now, wow. if you run across one solid person in the music industry, mm. count yourself very fortunate because, you know, most people aren't that way. So he was just a flake in the end. And, and you know, it was just it was something for me to, to realize that. OK, and it is what it is. But I don't I don't know. A young, a young girl, right? He was very young or? I mean, very young is what, 18, 19? When you start talking 23, 24, 25, mm -hmm. I mean, you know, his, his mom was my biggest supporter. His, his, mm -hmm. his mom was, like, very, very close to me. She appreciated everything that I had done for him. You know, his dad, you know, even his brother, I mean, basically said, hey, he wouldn't be here if it wasn't for you. And I didn't want any adoration or anything from him. Mm -hmm. He didn't owe me anything, but at least don't appreciate treat me. Well, or don't treat me like I did something wrong to you when all I've ever done was help you. Now, mm -hmm. this is the thing. I've always been successful in my life, in my work life, in my professional life. And, and you know, I, I, well, let me take that back. No, I have not always been professional, but I've always been on a, a track to be mm -hmm. successful. I, I, I think that's the best way to put it. You know, so, you know, I didn't need, I didn't need any of that other stuff to define me. And, and, and whatever happens with my record, it's great, but it won't define who I am as a person. I mean, I'm still, mm -hmm. I will still be the same guy, you know, uh, cutting up, doing, doing the stuff that I do and enjoying life. But I mean, I just don't, I'm not going to buy into that. I don't think you have to change and become somebody. Uh, well, else. let me give you a quote from Jay Z before I ask you my next question. And thank you for sharing that. Jay Z said, I remember hearing him say this, I think only last year or the year before. He said, People say I've changed as if I worked as hard to do the same. And I know it may not be exactly what we're talking about, but that has always stood out to me. I always remember him saying that because I think there's good and bad change. So I'm not opposed to change, but what type of change? See, now let's put that in context because right? I think that's like very that. important. Right. <laughs> now, now, I right? mean, but, and not to, you know, I mean, you know, Jay-Z is, you know, he's still, he's still my top, but I love one. that. You heard what he said, as if I worked this hard to be the same. Right. But but you have to look at where he started his journey. Right. I mean, if you go back to Marcy Projects and Jay-Z's origin, you know, um, you know, it's, it's one of those things that he couldn't. I mean, I mean think about it. Now, there are those that Jay-Z grew up with. I think one of his guys named Tata. That's his boy from Marcy Projects. And, and I, I'll tell you what I do know, and I don't, I don't, I'm not going to profess that I know him at all, and I don't. Mm -hmm. But from mm -hmm. what I've heard from people that, that were close mm -hmm. enough, I mean, he's a solid, solid dude. Like, solid. He does, he's got that air about him. He's right, just had right. that air he's about solid. him. But, yeah. but he can only take people so far mm -hmm. before you realize, okay, well, you're not really talking about what I'm talking about. Mm -hmm. You're not, mm -hmm. I mean, so, you know, you're going to lose people, but that that's, that doesn't necessarily have to be his success. He's just growing. You know what But I mean? what do you make of his quote? Because I dig it. I think, I think the quote is, is spectacular. Pain. It's spectacular. Mm -hmm. and, 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 that, and, and, it's, and it's facts. I mean, you, you don't, you know, you can't remain the same. You can't have the same consciousness, you know, I mean, but you can still be the same person to your humble, core. Humble. Absolutely. Mm -hmm. Absolutely. And, and, you know, mm -hmm. he, I think he made a comment one time before, if I'm not mistaken, that, as long as he's a millionaire, his his guy Tata will be a millionaire. I so, love it. I love it. Yeah. So, all right. So, tell us: um, Have you ever been in any compromising positions Absolutely. in terms of how success, as we're talking about now, can change us for the worse? Because I'm a, I'm I'm an advocate of change, but not negative change. We are going to reinforce. So, tell us a bit about those in power, those who may have said, you know, give me some of this, and I'll make you famous. <laughs> Whether it's, whether it's from a homosexual man or whether it's from yeah, a woman, yeah. spill some juice. Yeah, that, I mean, that's the industry. I mean, it's, it's, that's what it is. I mean, mm -hmm. like, they don't call it the casting couch for no reason. And I'm not mm -hmm. trying to... I'm not trying to bash the industry. I'm, I'm not. No, you just, you just, but it's, yeah. I'll talk about my personal experience. Yeah. I, I, I was at a big industry event some years ago. 
big, I mean, big industry. I mean, a bunch of A top, you know, A listers there in the music industry. I mean, like major shakers and movers. And mm -hmm. this guy walks into this room, like, I mean, this place was huge. It was in Cali. This guy walks in and this guy literally, he like sucks all of the electricity up in the room. Like he's like, people are literally almost kissing the ring as he's walking through the crowd. And I don't know who this guy is, but he's just making his way through the crowd. Right. And I'm over at my table with my little, my little team and just kind of out <laughs> of the way. And I don't know how, but this guy makes his way to my table and he comes over. He says, what's up to a guy that I, I knew that was working for Columbia Records at the time. And he said, hey, what's up, D? And everybody's greeting him. And then he looks at me and he says, hey, man, um, you're a pretty big guy. What are you like a bodyguard or something? And I'm like, no, no, I'm actually a uh, producer and a songwriter. Right. Mm -hmm. So as I said that, this guy put his hand on my shoulder. Right. And mm. he start he starts massaging my shoulder. Like 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 and, as we say in the UK in a fruity way. Yeah yeah yeah. I mean I mean oh, you know, right. he no. was he was so he was like hey so you want to come back to my room and let me hear some of your stuff? And obviously he was a power player and I knew he was a power player. You know what I'm saying? But I'm like, no sir. I mean this when I I broke out my southern charm. I was like, no sir, I'm not interested. I appreciate it. So he's okay. famous, right? He's known. I mean, he, he's an industry, he, he's a right. power player. I mean, big time power player. And, and publicly, he done this little move. Oh, he's, I mean, in front of guys sitting at the table and they're looking at me like, how are you going to handle this? And I'm like, no, sir. Uh, mm -hmm. But he can obviously see the distress on my face. And I can tell you physically, I could have got up, stood up, grabbed this guy and like literally just threw him. Shot him down. Mm -hmm. Right, but this is what the guy told me though. He said, listen, don't don't uh don't be insulted, you know, and don't take it the wrong way. And he said, Yeah, you, I know you want to get up and kick my, you know what? He said, But if you do, it'll be the worst mistake that you ever make. Wait, he said that to you. He said it to me. And this is the thing, right? When he said it, I knew he meant it. Like I knew that if I did anything, that I wouldn't make it out of there. So, you know, uh I I I uh so he Stand knew up. that you were obviously straight then for him to have yeah, that response yeah, yeah, by your yeah, response. Yeah. So how did you handle it? I mean, I just, I, I, I shook it off. I mean, it was one of those situations of being in the moment and just saying, you know what? Hey, I was like, no, nah, it's okay. You know, I'm, I'm okay. You know, no, no, no harm, no foul. No, no. I mean, I mean, and I'm not trying to be funny. It's not the first time that a man hit on me. So it wasn't, it wasn't like I was like, you know, you know, but it, it's just, I wasn't expecting that, you know, like somebody to be so, and that was like, and that's just like a norm. I mean, it's kind of like a normal thing. Like, you know, if you're willing to get down, you're willing to get down. And I mean, and, and I don't knock whatever you want's doing. I mean, whatever your thing is, that's your thing. But, you know, I just, mm -hmm. for me, it, it's, it's such a dark, dark industry. And that's mm -hmm. all I'll say. I mean, mm -hmm. it's a very dark mm -hmm. industry. Uh, and, and, uh, but there's also a lot of, positive things that come from it you know as well you know so, so like what this about, let me go a little bit deeper into that then if you don't mind so in yeah. terms of that was your i guess you've had a few a couple you say experiences like that do you know of anybody you know we read of the tabloids whether it's true or not yeah. you know massive especially mature mature gents in the business um do you know of anyone not that you have to give names if you're uncomfortable that has had a real um dark experience where it has been um power has been totally misused and they have had oh, absolutely sort of absolutely is there listen, a lot of secrecy in that in the business I'm absolutely not but, but but listen I, i'll tell you a personal experience of mine mm -hmm. and and <laughs> listen i i was a i i was a no-name producer mm -hmm. i just happened to have a recording studio i just happened to have music yeah. right this lady came in the studio one day and i mean you know, it was it was someone it, someone connected her to me. Say, hey, I have a cousin; she can sing. I'm like, okay, I'm interested. Send her through. Mm -hmm. Let's you know, let's get it popping. Let's get it popping. Mm. So the lady came through. I mean, <laughs> listen, the skirt was so short, you could I mean, you could literally see her panties. The top was so <laughs> low. I mean, she's about to fall out. And I had to tell her, say, listen, let me mm. let me be clear with you. Like, like Easy. one, I don't play with my money. Two, mm -hmm. I'm not going to give you no tracks for no sex. So mm -hmm. don't ever come to the studio again like that. 
Wow. But, but what was her response? Tell us that. I mean, she was like, I mean, she could tell I was on to her. She was like, I'm sorry. It'll never happen again. You know, How embarrassing. But it's like, I mean, it's like, you know, don't jam me up, you know, or try to jam me up because I'm not even trying to look for that. I mean, this is business. And you know, when you start mixing the, the two together, mm. excuse my language, shit goes south. I mean, just go, mm -hmm. it, it doesn't work. It doesn't work. So. Well, you know what? Here's, here's my philosophy. I know we've been taught not to mix business and pleasure, but there are some artists that has met the love of their lives, got married, and it's worked for them. I'm not saying it should, you should make it a part. Very few and far in between. Very few very and far, far in between. between. And, you know, I was that very, very young girl many, many, many years ago that would have married my manager, but I left him. So... Uh, so I, I, was, I got into music for five minutes. So somebody did ask a question. Mm -hmm. And they said, have you ever helped assisted people who have gone on to success and help have and just blanked you? Yeah, yeah, they, yeah, absolutely. Yes, yeah. I mean, I, people have done that to me. You know, I mean, they didn't look back. I mean, I, I should have been on some, some artist records that I helped <laughs> early on. And, and I mean, if it wasn't for me helping them, you know, more than likely they probably wouldn't have run into the situation that they ran into, but it happens, mm -hmm. you know, mm -hmm. um, and, and, and you just, I mean, you don't get bitter about it. I mean, you know, I mean, this is the thing I've learned is that, you know, success is the best form of revenge. And, and I define my success. Like, like, I mean, I live a great life. I live a great life and it's not a materialistic life, but you know, I mean, I, I can do what I want to do and I'm not beholden to anyone as it relates mm -hmm. to my music and my creativity. You know, I mean, I just put out a 20 song project. A lot of artists, you can't do that. And I just put out another, I have another single that's coming out uh, in a couple of weeks and I'm going to put out a song every month for the rest of this year. So that's mm -hmm. my, that's my goal, you know, is, is to just flood the market and, and do what I love to do, you know, and, and I'm fortunate that I'm already starting to collaborate with artists all from, across the world. You know, I, I'm dealing with an artist from Spain and I just met someone else that, that I'm looking to collaborate with. So it's dope and I'm excited. You know? Thank you for your question, Sandy. I was just saying before we push on that I agree in the better sense that it's not about making it a hobby and dating people that you work with. But I would also say if you work in a hospital every day as a doctor and you are surrounded by, I'm going to be, give the real side, you're surrounded by nurses, nurses every day, do not be surprised if you marry a doctor or nurse. So they, I think you have to... There's, 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 a, there's balance to everything. I mean, as long as you don't violate your conflict of interest, that's all I'm Right, saying. so for an example, if I was working with somebody, I would just get the project done. If we're supposed to be together, and it, you know, I mean, really, then I wouldn't resist that because, I, because I've been working with you. I'll right, get the right. project done, get right. that out of the way, because the reality is I do believe that people find their true twin flame soulmate life partner in the, in, if you, imagine, imagine you're, you're only in music 24-7. Is it surprising to marry a another musician? It's not. It, it's not. But but this is the thing I'll say though. I think I think that there's a level of reality that needs to that you need to strike. Mm -hmm. You know, mm -hmm. like for me, that that's why you know, like my my wife is my business partner. She's in like all of my videos and everything. So I mean, why you know, I, your videos though? Huh? Why? why are you on your videos? Because I mean, it only makes sense to I me. Mean, because if I want to, if you know, if I'm gonna, I mean, I have some. I think some kind of sensual songs in my, uh, on my CD. So on my project. So, I mean, at some point, you know, if I want to, if I have to be in a scene where I'm hugged up or in a woman's ear, I would rather be, you know, my wife than, you know, mm -hmm. than anyone else. So I mean, and it's yeah, just, I appreciate it's just, you saying you'd rather be, but as a creative, and this is the honest question, it's absolutely. not respect to you and your wife. I'm going to keep it broad. Do you I, not absolutely. Oh my God, sorry, someone just had a loud bang outside my window. Okay, so, yeah, I, I, okay, we don't want to be witnessing anything. Yeah, anyway, sorry. Um, God, that was, that was a weird one. Keep the camera one. rolling, keep it rolling. Yeah, on a um, creative perspective, do you think having your wife in all of your videos would be, I mean, wife being no disrespect, but I'm also creative, and I think that if I had a husband, yeah, I would have him on some, but I wouldn't have him in every video. So, so let me say this, and that's a good, that's a great, that's a Not great as a point. Creative, it'd be I, I, I agree with that. It's almost like, I'm going to keep it, real. it's almost like, am I just doing it so it looks like? No, not at all. So, so let me, and I, I, I definitely appreciate that. Mm -hmm. I, I think that's a, a very real statement. So, yeah. so one, I, I think for me, 
is that, you know, when you start to look at all of the videos, you know, when you start to look at my body of work, you're gonna see that as a narrative all, that it all ties together. Now well, she won't be she won't be the she won't be the focal point in mm. every video. And like I have songs mm. on my um, project that I won't even be in the video, you know. Mm -hmm. uh, so so it's gonna happen. But but I guess the point that I'm trying to make is that you know what I'm trying to to, to establish the fact is that I don't need someone else to sell my brand. You know what I'm saying? I don't want anyone. No, else that to I get. But brand. would you never have another woman in your video? Oh, absolutely. Yeah, yeah. As a matter of fact, we're shooting this week, and I'm using. We're, we're supposed to shoot this week in mm -hmm. DC uh, for one of the songs on my project, and you know, it's, it's it's a couple of models. I mean, these are models. You know, that'll you know now. Will my wife probably end up being as a <laughs> as a you know extra? Probably so. You know, but but it's just mm -hmm. it's just for the vibe of it and the flavor of it, you know, but, but definitely, I mean, I just think it's, it's just about keeping it like real. And, and then for us, I mean, here's the thing I'll say for the demographic or the, 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 the uh, group or the audience that, that, that will appreciate my music. I mean, they're not all, I mean, the majority of people are not into all that superficiality. You know what I mean? I mean, they, mm -hmm. I mean, that's, it's just more so that that's more so kind of like, uh, I think it's a, like a younger person's thing where you got to keep it fresh. You got to keep it, you know, because you got to keep know. stimulating. No, and let me tell you why I say I don't know. And, and, and bear with me while I say this. And absolutely. Um, I'm going to give you a couple of examples, right? And that's not me discrediting your opinion, by the way. Right, right. Yeah? Absolutely. Okay. You're going to have someone who says they do fashion. A lot of people are in fashion. Right. I, and I look at them and I think, really? <laughs> Okay, and they look at me and say, aren't you in fashion? No, I'm not, but I definitely know wardrobe. It right, is. right, right, right. But what I'm saying is, you're going to have musicians that are not creative just because they're musicians. Does it make them creative? That's right, that's right. right. You're going to have people that write songs, as I used to do, and every song sounds the same. Right, right, right. Right, and because remember, we all have our individual styles. Absolutely. Unless we have other artists and, and mimicking. So I feel... Like, I don't really think it's an age thing in terms of dynamic creativity. I Example, will I am. I may not be a massive fan of all of his tracks, but I can't wait to see what he's wearing. Right, right, right. Because he exudes individuality, but he's never going to have typical trousers. And he, right. you just know he's going to be banging in something totally different. Gwen Stefani. Um, I can go on with people that I think are individual. Right. Lucy Gray may not be much of a singer, but you know she's different as hell. Right, right. Absolutely. Yeah? So I, I agree. This thing about, I'm, a, I'm a dynamic, creative person. And so I do like, when I'm looking at like anyone's music videos, half the time, okay, respect due to Beyonce, for an example. We spoke about Jay-Z before. Respect due to her. But on the flip side, I know what I'm getting all the time in regards to your image. Right, right. Yeah, yeah. Your, your videos are different, but I know what you're going to look like all right, the time. Right, So I don't need to see you. I'll just listen to you. Right. Now, I, don't I, think I, I, I get that. Younger, it means that my brain craves creativity and storyline. Right. But, but you're, but you're a, different, a, different, um, a different animal, you know, as it relates <laughs> to that. No, ser seriously. <laughs> I, mean, I mean, you know, I'm saying that in the most, you know, I mean, but, but as, as a creator... You know, I mean, I'm you know, the the the, the 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 average eye. I mean, let me say this: the average ear or the average eye can't hear the mistakes that other people can hear in music or pick right. up. They don't see the boom mic hanging in the video, or they don't see that the lighting is bad, or some of those things. You right. know what I mean? So, so it happens. I mean, but but I I think you know, for me, because you know, uh, I, I'm fortunate in the sense that. You know, I've been actually, you know, like directing and, and shooting the majority of my videos and, mm -hmm. you know, editing and all of that stuff. It's just kind of been planning too. But, but I mean, it'll definitely get to the point where, you know, mm -hmm. I mean, she won't fit the bill, nor will I. I mean, because it, it'll be a different Oh, no, story. no. My last statement yeah. wasn't even about people working, by the way. I, 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 yeah, yeah, yeah. Right. And yeah. saying about, about not everyone has that anyway, whether right. it's, you know, no matter how famous people are. A absolutely. They, I mean, for example... Clearly, Missy Elliott's popping when it comes to visuals, right? Missy, you all in, from back in the day, you always knew it was going to be something quite futuristic or Missy for me. Even though I'm not, a, I'm not a, say massive fan of music, of you know her, I, you know. But in terms of like, she's just individual. 
Madonna was always, you never knew what you were getting next to Madonna. And I think right, right. a visual, that's just me. It doesn't have to yeah. be you or anyone else. But I'm always like, let me watch and see what yeah, is going to happen in this. A so, absolutely. I mean, you know, she, she was an Theme, everything. But she, she was an artist. I mean, she is an artist that's really big into shock value as well. You know what I'm saying? I mean, and, and you know, for, for me, it, it's, it's just about the music. It's about the story. It's about the music. You know, it's about the narrative, uh, how, how people uh, interpret it. You know what I mean? So mm -hmm. I, I don't really, I, I don't want to ever do anything that's not in alignment with who I am, you know, that's, as a person. That's the most important thing. Right? You'll, you'll, you'll never see, you know, and it's, right. not a, it's not a knock, but you'll never see, you know, any video or anything with me up in a strip club because that's not indicative of how I live my life. You know what I mean? And that, it's not a knock. I mean, I'm not, I'm not saying anything against that. But for me, the money and champagne and naked right, girls. No, no, I'm a, I'm a real dude. Like I, I'm a real dude. I like, I like, I like what I like, and I like to spend my money on the things that I like to spend it on, mm -hmm. and that's not one. And I like to mm -hmm. enjoy my life. But I just, to me, it's just about being real. I mean, and I, I think that a lot of times, you know, we, we, we create more image than we create content and substance. And for yes. me, you know, yes. I, I yes. you know. And it kind of goes back to what I was talking about earlier, just about how, you know, like I just have like an, amuse uh, an amazing team like of musicians that help me bring, you know, my, my dreams to fruition. So, so it's, it's just a good thing for me. But um, mm -hmm. I, I think too many times that we just get, we get lost. In, well, I'm going to say this. I don't want to get lost in stuff that won't matter at the end of the day. I love it. I Period. love it. You know, I get is you're seriously grounded. Um, and anyone can lose their foot in this world, absolutely anyone. But what I will know is I think because you are so grounded and so in tune of yourself as a spirit, that even if you lost your foot, it will just bounce back right. Straight right, away. Right, I don't right. feel that from you. Obviously, and, a family man and businessman and extremely focused. Yeah, because I mean, I mean, I mean you're, you're at the point where everything is for all the marbles. Mm -hmm. I mean, this is what you work for. I mean, I, I didn't work. To me, I, mean, I didn't work, you know, hard and to make this self investment mm -hmm. to go out here and squander it on something that's not going to really matter. I mean, this is this is all methodical. This is thought out. This is this mm -hmm. is very deliberate. You know what I mean? Like everything that I do is deliberate. Every word that I choose to say, it, it is deliberate. You I don't, I don't, you absolutely. Well, you, be, you and your family should be very proud of each other because you're a very solid, very solid individual. That's what I get from very solid. I appreciate that, you know, and I'm just, I, mm. I, I do. I mean, that means a lot to me. And at no, the end of the day, 100%. at the end of the day, like when, when, like when my kids and, and my wife and, 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 you know, they're about to put me in the ground. I just, I just want them to be able no to feel time like. To touch wood, right, touch absolutely. Wood. But, but <laughs> I just want them to be able to say, you know what, this was a solid dude. He did his best. And, and, yeah. and when he fell short, mm. he didn't mind saying, Hey, you know, I'm sorry. I, you know, but, let me let me try to rework it. And I just think that, you know, I mean, I don't care who you are. I mean, I just think that sometimes, you know, because people are musicians or celebrities, they misconstrue that and they think a lot higher of themselves than what they are. Yeah. Yeah. And, and, and I guess at the end of the day, this this is all I'm really trying to say is that, I mean, if, if we do this again 12 months from now and let's say I'm like Grammy nominated and everything. God I willing. Mean, I mean, God willing, mm -hmm. absolutely. I would receive that. But yeah. I would just hope that, you know, I would still be the same person because at the end of the day, I mean, those things aren't, they're just material. I mean, it's not going to define me. I mean, that stuff won't define me. I mean, that, that's not, I mean, it's like, it's like being a parent and, and, you know, your kids won't look back and say, yeah, my dad made X amount of dollars a year. They're not going <laughs> to say that. They're going to say, okay, this, he was a good dad or he was a bad dad or he was okay. So, you know, I, I see someone like you as, um, from your vibration and things that you, you're expressing tonight, as someone that would make a really good music mentor. You know, or just or just somebody. That, that, I would sign you up as a music mentor as well, because I feel like, honestly, I don't know you in person. We all make mistakes. I'm not saying you can't make a mistake tomorrow or last oh, night. Yeah. Yeah, but yeah. there is an essence of quality, and I feel like, um, this mentorship right now. Anyone hearing this has got mentorship from you for free, for free. I mean, 
you know, yeah. so I see you doing that. I mean, yeah, anything that I can impart to anyone, like, like mm -hmm. I lost, I mean, this is the thing. So as a business person, so what I can say about the music industry is that I lost so many years of my life early mm -hmm. on mm -hmm. because I was chasing behind the wrong people and I didn't, and my bullshit -o meter wasn't working. You Ooh, know? I love it. <laughs> but I tweaked it, you know what I mean? I refined mm -hmm. it. Like now, my wife will tell you, oh, I can smell it like a mile away. I'll just tell you straight up, that person is full of, I'm not dealing yeah. with them. Your you know, but that's experience, you. right? And it is, it's being in tune because I'm not going to waste time on anything that's not going to, you know, uh, bear any fruit down the road. Mm -hmm. right? mm -hmm. So I'm going to be good to people that I deal with. I'm going to always be good because in the end, it's not about, I mean, too many people chase after, you know, crumbs. And it's like, you know, mm. you're squabbling over that. Like, well, what are you going to do? They end up being crumbs and you thought they were a whole cake. That's, that's what right. I was saying. That's right. Honestly. That's right. That's, yeah. that's, that's a great point. And I've you seen that so many times. Cake, ended up being crumbs. But on the flip side, I will say, I respect a solid person, especially a solid man. One thing I cannot stand is a sometime-ish person who's flaky. Yeah. So, so I'm not going to get... I'm not going to get biblical on you, okay, because that's not my thing. But there's a scripture that resonates with me that says a double-minded man is unstable in all of his ways. And, I mean, you think about it. How can you be double-minded? I mean, you're going to be unstable. I mean, you have to be, you have to be solid in your decisions. You have to be solid in, in your commitment to whatever it is you're going to do. Because, you know, if I tell someone, hey, I'm going to do this, I have to do it, you know. So yeah, but, but, but is there anything else that I haven't asked you that you would love to share? I just want to say that uh, you know, uh for those that have not heard of me or heard of the project that we have out, I would I would say, you know, uh check it out. You can actually preview it. I think it's it's something unique. Um, you know, we've gotten really good uh response uh from you know just all over. I mean, and it's it's amazing. Um, but, you know, I think really more so what it is, I can say it's a it's good, good people, uh, you know, just vibing on, you know, music. And that, and that goes along with me. You know, I mean, it's just good, good people that, that are great at what they do, having fun. So that's amazing. Well, two things. First of all, I'm going to be having a entertainment night, another one at some point, a music, a musician night. So please come back and perform for us. Absolutely. Also, I'm looking forward to your, your, is it your EP album that's going to Actually, be Actually, no, it's, a no it's, it's out now. It's, it's out it's on out all now. platforms. Okay. So all platforms. Uh, yep. And uh, so come back on maybe musicians night. Maybe you need yeah. to have exclusive music of mine on this platform and you can just tell us everything i'm going to continue listening to your tracks because i do like your sound i like your videos i like in fact you do it yourself yeah <laughs> yeah i mean and, and that's it's just by that's by design it's by you know mm. to me it's like you know when you're creative you know i i feel like this like so the the, the guys that i work with uh as musicians like so by me writing and, and doing the arrangement and production they like free me up so much creatively that I can pick up, you know, cameras and say, okay, I'm going to start shooting videos now. I'm going to start framing shots. And, and, mm -hmm. and but, but, but this is the thing I, I believe though. I think that success breeds more success. So whatever I was mm -hmm. good at or whatever I'm good at, it's the same approach. I can apply it to whatever I'm trying to do. It's the same discipline. It's the eye to detail. You know, it's the research. It's the understanding. It's the not, you know, the no compromise, you know, approach to everything that you do. I mean, it's, it's you know, it's really what we make it and how we go about achieving Absolutely. it. Absolutely. Know? So as we wind down this live, um, if one young, especially a younger person, female or male, was keen to get into the business and they just excited to share with the world what they can do or want to do. What would be even your, you know, one tip, three top, you know, the top three tips, um, whatever that you would say to them in mentorship or advice? That's, that's a really good question. The, the first thing I would say is hone your craft. You know what I mean? <laughs> hone your craft. You know, it's kind of funny because you know, I, I kind of like, and I'm not going to like, you know, like say anything disrespectful about rappers, but it seems like a lot of times rappers put more thought into their names than they do into their skill. You know what I mean? So oh my like, God. they yeah. have these spectacular names, but then when you hear them 
give you their bars, it's like, wow. But what, what I would that, say, and, mm. yeah, so hone, hone your craft. Mm. Secondly, create mm. a mechanism or a way for you to be able to pursue your goal. Mm. For me, I'm, I'm, I'm an executive by day. You know, I've been an executive for the past 20 years, you know, oh. of my life. So it was it was easy. Well, I'm not going to say it was easy. My wife, thank God, I got a wife that's very supportive. But, Excellent. you know, but it was it was easy for me to be able to say, OK, I'm going to pursue this project that I want to do now. You know, so, you know, that th the main thing is to be in control of your own destiny, because no one in the music industry that I've ever run across. Mm -hmm. They're not gonna do anything for you for free. They're mm -hmm. not gonna do you any favors. They're not yeah. gonna do you any solids. So be in control, you know, and, and, and do it because you love to do it. Don't mm -hmm. chase after for money or fame because if you do, you're gonna be greatly disappointed. The passion, the purpose. Mm. Absolutely. Well, thank you so much for those two top tips. Listen, Mr. Terence Thompson, it has been amazing. Thank I have you. I one last it. question for you before you go, and Absolutely. it will be to ask you to share your afterthoughts. How has it been for you tonight, speaking with me on Free Flame Thoughts? It's been great. I mean, it's, it's really cool, you know, because for me, it's kind of uh, surreal, and it's kind of, you know, I'm, I'm here possibly on the cusp of something that could happen with my project. And mm -hmm. whatever happens, I mean, it's been received well for those that have heard it. So mm -hmm. I'm excited about that. But also, you know, just to be able to share, it's, it's like when you do a, a song or you do music, for me, if it resonates with one person, it was worth it. Like, like I mean, at the end of the day, if, if one person can say, hey, I felt what you were saying and mm -hmm. it touched me or, you know, it gave me some insight, I mean, you know, I mean, because too many times, like, I, I hear people really saying, other artists or whatever, saying, hey, don't spend your money on that. Buy my music or do spend your money on me because, you know, you, you need me. And it's like, yo, you don't need me. I'm, I'm like, you don't need my music. You know what I'm saying? You don't mm -hmm. need it, you know. But, you, you know, the, the, the essence or the origin of my music came from a good place, you know, so it's not pretentious and... and, and you know, I, I'm not out trying to build people out of their money or, you know, I mean, it's just hopefully you can enjoy the music and make some memories and, you know, kind of like it was when I was growing up. You know, I have songs That's that nice. still resonate in my mind, you know. That is so nice. Mr. Thompson, you have been an amazing guest speaker. You've given have me, me such back. You, yeah, 100%. You've been an amazing guest speaker. You've really shared. It's been transparent. It's been pretty real. I love it. So thank you so much, and to your supportive other half, as we would say. Sometimes we say better half. Let's to my team, Hold, listen, to my yeah. wife, to, my, to, to your my whole family, to, yeah. my, to my team of musicians and producers. Yes, I, I'm, I'm so very true. blessed and fortunate. Thank you so much for joining us, and I will see you very soon on Musicians Night. That would be amazing. Thank yes, you so much, guys, for thank joining you. us. Please feel free, Mr. TT, to exit the live with your... Thank you. Where's your ex? And I'll speak to you later. Thank you so much. <laughs> right. Thank Namaste. you. Thank you. Bye. Bye. Oh, guys, that was nice. That was nice. That was Mr. Terrence Thompson. Thank you so much, guys, for joining us tonight. It was truly enlightening to hear another person's perspective in regards to the music industry. I just find Terence has a real solid spirit and I think he would be great as a musician mentor, this mentoring in this industry that can be amazing, but also we know it has the dark side. So, you know, peace and love to you, the Thompson family, and I'll see you again on Free Flame Thoughts, Mr. TT, really soon. Peace and love, guys. Thank you so much for joining me. And next week... I tell you before I go, I have a uh, soul talk with silver. So if you would like to share anything that you feel next Wednesday, right here at 30 p.m. UK time, if you have anything that's quite deeply soulful stories, it doesn't matter whether it's bereavement, heartache, someone that you may have lost, anything at all that is a what you would consider a very soulful story, 
or experience you've had or still having, please feel free to inbox me. I will add your name down. And if you're not certain, perhaps just pull up on the live next Wednesday and you can still have an opportunity to share your story. And then on the Friday, I believe I have a very beautiful Lady Di sex therapist. Mm -hmm. Don't just come on the Friday now because it's sex, guys, because I know you. I'll see you on the Wednesday. Peace and love. Ha, 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 ha.